predict gravitational waves? Yeah, so Einstein, when he was d developing the theory of general relativity, and this was the theory of gravity. So the, the thing that, so we all learn in school, Newton's version of gravity. And Newton's law has been, it's easy to understand, it's intuitive, it says you have two objects that have mass, and they're going to feel a force of attraction between them. And it was quite quantitative. He said the force of attraction will be proportional to their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance separating them. It's very clean. It's, That's a clean, clean operation. You know, we teach it in, in very early uh, sort of first encounters with physics. And it was quite successful. It told us about how orbits uh, would work. Uh, and and it, it also had pretty early on places where it didn't work perfectly. Now, what Einstein when he was formulating, thinking about gravity, he kind of turned it on its head. And he said, well, look, gravity's not really a force. Gravity is the geometry of space-time. Big words. But he had a series of papers, two or three, uh, from 1915 to 1918, in which he sort of formulated this theory of, of general relativity. He wrote down what, what are now known as Einstein's equations, they look not that much worse than, say, Newton's law, except they're quite beastly. They're very difficult to solve. But part of that work was that he did ask the question, what happens if whatever object you're thinking of isn't just sitting still in space. What happens if it's moving? And not just moving in a const at constant velocity. What happens if it's accelerating? And then out of his equations popped this wave-like object, which he called gravitational waves. Ah. And, and the other you know, thing I want stuff like that to pop out of my equations. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have equations where stuff pops out? Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. Look, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm still stuck on the wave part. Like, the wave part, okay. Was, was he gravitational surfing? <laughs> they have a lot of analogies to that, because if you wanted to try and visualize what would this look like, one way that you could is you could think of space-time as the surface of a still pond. And you drop a big rock in the middle, and there's a wave that travels, a ripple that travels on the surface. It travels outwards from where you drop the rock. And if you were a little teeny tiny ant on a surfboard, you would surf that wave, right? There are other mm -hmm. tools available to you. You try to measure the wavelength of that so that you can infer what created that wave. Because you don't otherwise, you didn't see the thing happen. No, exactly right. So we measure a number of things. We measure the wavelength, which is the spacing between between the peaks, uh, in the successive peaks. We also measure the amplitude, which is how big, what was the height of 